Hi, my name is Christine Olivieri, and I want to be your paleo practitioner. So welcome to the first video for nutrition. Let's talk about food. So what should you eat? Well, basically human beings, you can put all of our foods that we eat into three categories. We eat carbohydrates, fats, and protein. And believe it or not, out of those three categories, the one that you can actually live a very, very healthy life without completely are carbohydrates. You cannot live your life healthy without fats and without protein. So carbs are the most dispensable food product. Now our modern diet is way too high in simple, high glycemic carbohydrates. They turn into sugar way too fast and overwhelm your body's ability to make and respond to insulin. So therefore, I'm gonna be teaching you about the glycemic index. It's a very good tool in which to choose healthy carbohydrates. All right, we're also gonna talk about your metabolism, which is basically the rate of the burning of calories that your body uses for energy. Now a normal metabolism wants to keep your blood sugar stable and avoid wide fluctuations of before and after meals. And that helps to avoid oxidative stress. Now it's not as hard as you may think to eat less food at a meal and be just as satisfied. In fact, Dr. Brian Wansink, PhD, did a study at Cornell University recently, which determined that most people judge when to stop eating by how much food is left on their plate, rather than waiting for a feeling of satiety or fullness. So this means that you're probably gonna stop eating at about the same amount of food remaining on your plate, regardless of how much you start with. So whether you start by eating off of a 10-inch plate or a 12-inch plate. So eat slower, sip more water, and put a little less food on your plate. And be wary of restaurants and their huge portions. It doesn't mean you can't eat in restaurants. It just means that if you're going to eat in a restaurant, do the best you can to push some of the food to the side of your plate, eat what's in the center, and maybe take home the rest. Because we all have a tendency to want to finish our plate, whether it's to a complete emptiness or to the same amount of food left on your plate. So let's start with the first category of carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates all turn to sugar. Doesn't matter what carbohydrate you eat, whether it's a bagel, or a piece of bread or some pasta, or whether it's something like an apple, a tomato, or some broccoli. They all turn to sugar. So let's talk about the glycemic index, which is a good guide to help you choose to eat lower glycemic index carbs, which turn to sugar slowly. Now on my website, there's a companion book, which includes a glycemic index guide. Now the glycemic index is always based on consuming 50 grams of a carbohydrate and they're assigned a number from zero to 100, with 50 and lower being low glycemic index carbs and 50 and higher being less desirable high glycemic index carbs. So when you choose a food to eat, a carbohydrate to eat, you wanna choose one that rates a lower number because that means it's gonna to turn to sugar slowly. That's also gonna cause you to have less blood sugar fluctuations from before a meal to after a meal. You want to keep your sugar a little bit more stable with less fluctuations. That's by, that you'll get that by choosing lower glycemic index carbohydrates. Also, you want to choose your non-starchy vegetables and fruits over your starchy vegetables and fruits. These also will cause less blood sugar fluctuations. And there's also resistant starch, which basically passes through your body undigested. That includes things like bananas, beans, and legumes. These are less desirable foods. And there's fiber. Fiber is also associated with carbohydrates. Most people seem to think that fiber is basically obtained from eating grains. That is not true. Grains like wheat and rice and corn are actually the worst sources of dietary fiber. It's not a good quality fiber, and it's very caustic to our system, as well as not being as high in fiber. In fact, did you know that non-starchy vegetables on average have eight times the fiber of whole wheat bread? And fruit on average has twice the fiber of whole wheat bread. So why are grains so unhealthy? Well, basically they have glutens, lectins, and phytates. And I'm gonna be talking more about that 
in the carbohydrate nutrition video. Now also there's the glycemic load. Many people are familiar with glycemic index. There's also the glycemic load, which is based on the amount of carbohydrate of that food that you consume at one time. So if you eat a large amount of, say, watermelon, the glycemic load is very low on that food because it's so high in water. So you can eat a little bit more of that. But the glycemic load of a baked potato is very high, which means you can only eat a very small amount. And then, the, of course, vegetables, which are the best source of dietary fiber, as I mentioned. OK, the second uh, category of foods is proteins. Now, proteins are very important for human beings because that's what, causes, that's what allows us to make enzymes, antibodies, and the peptide hormones. And it's essential for building and the maintenance of our body tissues. In fact, the, the essential uh, amino acids that we can obtain are really only obtained in protein, not in vegetable protein, but in animal protein. Protein also modulates nitric oxide, which is a very potent dilator, vasodilator of our blood vessels. So it keeps your blood pressure nice and low. So you want to maintain your body's nitric oxide as well as its availability. Now, protein is basically obtained through animal protein, which is a complete protein and contains all the essential amino acids. It's also what caused human beings to get these great big brains. When we broke off from the apes during evolution, Apes are basically not hunters, but humans became hunters, and that's how we got our brains. And that's the difference between hunters and the hunted. Because most creatures on this planet that are hunters usually are meat eaters, and those that are the hunted are not. Vegetable protein is another source of protein, but basically it's incomplete proteins. But the best sources are nuts and seeds, not legumes and not soy. And then the third category of foods are fats, which are probably the most important of the three macronutrients for human health. So let's talk about healthy versus unhealthy fats.